Hey, travelers, another week. We got rid of Troy and we traded him for Andy. Yay, I'm back. And Alex decided to be on the other side of the camera this week. So. I was ordered by Beth. You were ordered by Beth. I was trying to play it off as you you electively decided to do it. I didn't want to stu- be stuck with just Landon. Too honest, Landon. Ugh, honest. <laughs> honest, Alex. That's what they call you. I don't think so. <laughs> Anyway, Andy was nice enough to bring beer back from Colorado. Yes. What a guy. I and mean, Robin did too. So I don't Robin I don't deserves at least twenty percent of the credit. Twenty percent credit. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's about fifty fifty split. Well, that's nice. Yep. And you almost got bit by a rattlesnake just to bring it back? No. No? We rattlesnake. Was it a more harrowing tale than I <laughs> It wasn't as you bad were, as what you, you probably were, heard. We were near a rattlesnake? We were near one. We did okay. not see it. Oh. We didn't even hear it, but Oh. Robin heard it. I didn't hear it. So you. Oh, I, was I don't know say, if it actually. If you didn't exists. see it or hear it, how did you know there was one? Because there was a guy at the top of the hill going. By the way, there's a rattlesnake there, and we were like, "Oh, cool. Um, we're gonna go back." And he's like, "No, you can go around it." I'm like, "Okay, I can go around it." See, I was gonna play it <laughs> off as you brought the beer back, and you almost got bit by a rattlesnake. Well, that's, I mean, that's a hell of a story. It is. Who's yeah, honest but, now? Yeah. <sighs> so there much is honesty that. on this table. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm a dirty liar. Anyway, it's more, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's more, I just wanted to point out that you're wrong. You're wrong. Oh, How about some beer, you guys? <laughs> I'm wrong. What's the first Which one we part got am here? I wrong about? About me almost getting bit by oh, a rattlesnake. I did dirt, bring the beer back. Not the dirty liar. Part. Well, I this mean, this is a that. Vienna lager. Yes. From uh, a brewery Woods called Boss. Woods Boss. Where is this? In downtown Denver. Well, not downtown, downtown Denver, but it's in Denver. Yeah. I would also like to point out that we have several people here today, which is why we have these big crawlers. Mm-hmm. You'll notice on other weeks where, uh, oh, good job, Alex. You'll notice other weeks where we have like two beers and they're the 12 ounce variety. That's because we have like two people here. <laughs> that is that is a full crawler. <laughs> it's your house. I'll let you spill more. Very excited. So this was the Vienna Lager you said, Alex? Yeah, this is the Vienna. Okay. Yes. This one was my favorite from there, which is why we bought a crawler of it. Woods, Woods Boss. Boss. Were you not paying attention? No? That sounds good. <laughs> that was Beth off camera going, That's, where was this from again? Uh, we've we've got, the, uh, got the attention of the crowd already, mm-hmm. and we just started. Correct. It's a, it's a nice golden color. Mm-hmm. Um, so the story with Woods Boss, it actually reminded me, Alex, of our time working with the trail builders over at Wiscor. Um, so basically, a Woods oh. Boss is the guy who is in charge of like all those crews that go in and like build the trails and is in charge of maintaining them. A so. Woods Boss. Wiscor, for those of you that are outside of Wisconsin, mm-hmm. you know, it's... Uh, what is Wiscor? I don't even know what Alex, the heck Wiscor is. You, you took their money, so <laughs> <laughs> they they basically um, hire youth that are sometimes troubled to come out and clean up the trails and clean stuff. up trails mm-hmm. and they, okay. they have neighborhood crews. It's basically kind of like AmeriCorps, but for Wisconsin. Got right. it. Yeah. So there you go. There's the backstory for that. That way, save you some time. You don't have to look it up on the internet. But if you do, you'll probably see a video that this guy produced. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Dynamite drop in, Monty. Mm-hmm. It's very crisp. Uh huh. Again, this was my favorite beer that they had on tap. Um, I'm always surprised when I go. I'm not surprised, but I always put like a little feather in their cap when you go to a new place and you just try their lager. Yeah. Because that will tell you more about the quality control and just their. You know, we've, we've been talking about that a lot lately. Mm-hmm. I mean, on camera and off camera about the quality of the beer. We've been talking about the water and the um, the quality of people's beer. You know, you can hide a lot of imperfections in an IPA. Correct. And I think a lot of people don't really, and some people probably don't care. But Also correct. <laughs> yeah. I just want my hazy IPA, and that's all I care about. Well, and that's what Troy always says, too, is that like a lot, like um, a lager like this or a Pilsner's really difficult to get right mm-hmm. um, you really have to dial it in because the yeah. second something goes wrong in the process you're going to taste it yeah yeah so. and we've been fortunate around here that access to craft pilsners and lagers is pretty and well done ones right is it's the norm here not everywhere not everywhere but no. that was one of the reasons i was really impressed with woods boss 
And their tap room was just gorgeous. And it's made with Rocky Mountain water. Correct. Well, everything out there is. <laughs> oh. So um, what was the tap room like? Uh, all uh, woodwork, um, like very much the outdoors theme. Sure. Um, you basically walked into like somebody's log cabin basement. So, oh, nice. Um, but yeah, the the bar was all uh, was it? It wasn't all one solid piece, but it was basically like half log, like trunk of a tree that just got cut in half. Sure. Um, but yeah, really, really cool place. Um, love the woodwork. The people there were very welcoming as well. Any reason nice. you chose Woods Boss over the million other breweries there are out there? Um, so ba- we were doing kind of a round robin tour of downtown Denver where we just kind of went into one brewery that got recommended to us by uh, we did a downtown tour of like the capital type thing like a walking tour thing and uh, we walked past one brewery on that tour and the guy was like oh yeah this is my favorite brewery downtown so we're like okay we're going there first and then we got to talking to people there and then they we had our map of like we had mapped out places beforehand of like these breweries these breweries these breweries so then as we got talking to people at, this was at Jagged Brewing, which is also in Denver. That was our first stop. Um, what? I'm doing that? <laughs> what? I'm talking into the mic. <laughs> um, where was I? Robin distracted me from off camera. Yeah. You're talking about the breweries. Yes. Uh, so we were at Jagged Brewing, and then we got to talking to people there. And then they took a look at our map. They're like, okay, go here, go here. You can go here, but go to these places first right and then woods boss was on that list and they're like we're really good friends with them you definitely want to go check them out cool so that's that's always great to have someone go over like that tourist map with you when Mm -hmm. you're on a trip because i we did that the first time i went out to south dakota alone and like oh my god this is daunting right these all look neat but then somebody's like yeah you know what don't go here or this Right. This you got to go to this for sure. Make sure you have time for that. It's always good to get a, a local opinion when you're out traveling, right? Um, and when you travel with Spotted Cow, it it definitely opens up the conversation <laughs> a little bit easier too. So, what's that you got back there? <laughs> By oh. the way, I have a case of Spotted Cow in the car, and all of a sudden everybody's li- eyes light up, and they're like, "Oh, Spotted Cow!" And it's like, "Yeah, take would you some. like to trade?" <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you can. So, uh, I believe all three of these beers were traded for. Bottles, a few bottles of Spotted Cow. Oh, really? You just yes. did a straight-up trade? Yes. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's well, like currency. Yeah. In the beer world, Spotted Cow is currency. And if you're, if you're going by volume, you got a quite a deal there. Yes. As uh, as Daddy Porter from Madison, Wisconsin uh, proved, and, and if you haven't already checked out Daddy Porter on all of the social medias, you should do that. Um, cheers, Greg. Yeah, cheers, Greg. <laughs> he, uh, he took a whole trunk full of Spotted Cow out to Montana and then worked his way back and basically just traded spotted cow for all of the beer. So no, it's, it's good information. You know why? Because not everybody's in Wisconsin <laughs> and that's the only place you can get spotted cow, which so. is why it's in such high demand outside. Right. It's something where, um, like new Glarus definitely makes better beer. Yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. But, no one outside of the state has heard of any of that beer. They only hear about Spotted Cow. Right. So Spotted is, Cow has the, the rarity, but then also the name recognition that makes it I think desirable. You, you probably so. get extra points if you bring the other beer along. Yeah. You know, if you go, I'll trade you two Spotted Cows and a... Raspberry Tart. Yeah, or or something like that. Or, mm-hmm. you know, Moon Man. Right. And and they go, oh, what's Moon Man? And right. You go, well, that's, that's double the price of Spotted Cow, so you're going to have to... Pony up more. <laughs> I don't know if that works, but you know you can always try it, right? And that's part of the fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, I, I already we already poured the next one, so oh. this is the black Kolsch that you brought. Yes, I was, this was Robin's favorite beer at uh, Woods Boss. Um, and Robin, for those of you who have never met her, hates Kolsch's, her least favorite style of beer. But she's then, unfortunate. right? But then, as we were talking to the guys at Woods Boss, he's like, "You need to try this beer." If you like dark beer, you will like this beer. It was on their pilot series. Um, so they made it. Thanks again to the guys at Woods Boss. They made an exception and gave us a crawler of something that was on their pilot series. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. nice. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I think they were talking about bringing this back and making it a staple, but it was still in test series. It's so. quite smooth, but it, it doesn't have that real heavy backbone that you would expect on a darker beer. You know, Correct. a lot of. 
people that are afraid of darker beers. You know, you pour something like this and they go, oh, I'm not going to like it. It's dark. Mm-hmm. You know, this is still that light bodied, right. like a Kolsch would be anyway. Correct. But, it just has a little bit more flavor with the dark malts in there. Too. So is it basically just a Kolsch with different malts? I would assume so. Okay. <laughs> there again, don't brew beer. But, you know, if Troy were here, if Troy ever watches this, he's probably yelling at the TV. He doesn't watch these. No. <laughs> I said, if you ever watch, he should. I I mean, we all should, but also that about watching. If you if you don't like watching, you just like the audio version. If you'd rather just hear us, uh, we we still podcast, so we put all of these on our podcast channel. So if you just look up Taproom Travelers, wherever you get your podcasts, uh, you can get our podcast there. Are we on like we're on a bunch of them? Oh yeah, yeah. The Google one is the best. Uh You know that's. That's multi-format, so if you have iPhone or Android or... Oh, you can use it. Oh, that's nice. Isn't it? They should all be like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, that's that's. I think more and more people are going to that anyway, and then there was the rumor that the iTunes is going away or it's being replaced by something, so we're not on there, but yeah. gotcha. everything else we are on. Spotify cool. as well? Spotify as well. Okay. Yes. That's where I listen to all my podcasts, so... well. You don't listen to our podcast on there. I don't, apparently. Well, Sorry. So, speaking of Kolsch, Terrible guy. Mm-hmm. I just went to the Minnesota State Fair, and we, I had the uh, dill pickle Kolsch again from Tin Whiskers. Ooh, how was that? Delicious. It is... It, if you you're like going to put... If you're going to... Yeah, if you, you have to like pickles. Right. And if you're going to put pickles in any beer, a Kolsch is a good one to do it. Yeah. Um, I've had it before, yeah. and it's and it's very good. They <laughs> serve it with dill cheese and a uh, dill pickle on a stick. Yes. That is a very good yeah. pairing. Yes. Beth, Beth wants one now. <laughs> she remembers it. We didn't make it to the to the state fair this year. Yeah. Another record setting year, by the way. Oh, really? So if you if you don't like people, that is not the place for you. There were so many people. I, know. I keep seeing pictures. I'm of not people. I'm taking not pictures like, of the crowds. Not the biggest fan of big crowds. Yeah. And you by that say. I mean I'm not a fan of big crowds <laughs> at all. And at fifteen, I don't think any ahead. of us would have guessed that. And at fifteen dollars a head, yeah, they're making a killing out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> If I live to 60, I'm going to make a hell of a curmudgeon, even more than I am now. <laughs> I was about to say. Don't have to make it to 60 to be that, but... I said even more than I am now. I'm, I'm, I'm already there. I, I realize this. I'm just poking fun. I can accept that. <laughs> so this next one that Landon is opening is uh, from a different brewery. This one's out in Golden, Colorado. Best known for uh, the brewery Coors, but there are a lot of craft breweries still out there as well that are worth checking out. Uh, we also went to Cannonball Brewing out there, which was a lot of fun. Um, but this is from New Terrain. Um, <laughs> like it's going to explode. <laughs> woman owned, woman brewed. Now that is that is the purple we were talking about that we wanted on the uh, um, the tea episode. Mm-hmm. This is the black currant sour, which is why it has that lovely pinky purple hue. I'm not going to pour that correctly. You know, it's we still haven't figured out the crowler thing. You know, there are weeks where we do really, really well. Yeah, I just like, didn't want to set down my microphone. Oh, <laughs> well, that's fine too. But I set my microphone down and I still screwed it up. Yeah. So well, that. the first pour out of a crowler is always hard. Would you like some, Robin? <laughs> you don't have to crawl. There you go. She <laughs> crawled for the crawler. She crawled for the crawler. Don't knock the camera. All right. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's very. Beth was saying that the foam is still pink as well. Yes. Um, and yes, Robin, it is probably one of the prettiest beers I've ever seen as it well. It is a very pretty beer. Wow. Mm-hmm. So this was the standout favorite, which Ooh. is why we brought a crawler of that back as well. That's nice. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Um, drinks very smooth. <clears throat> yeah. Lots, for, lots for of a, fruity notes. For a sour, not. I mean, it's still sour, but mm-hmm. not like heavily punch you in the mouth. No, not overly acidic. It's pretty Won't smooth. punch you in the face with the tartness. Yeah, I was yeah. just going to say, it's pretty smooth with the with the tartness. There's mm-hmm. tartness, but yeah, it doesn't drop kick you in the jaw. Correct. You know? It just kind of lingers on the back back okay. of your tongue after you've had a sip. All, nice. the, all the ladies behind camera are, are giving the okay. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they, they that, one's be, that one's going to be gone soon. They have much mm-hmm. larger pores than we do. <laughs> <laughs> only four and a half percent i believe right that's yep yeah that's that's probably one of the better sours i've had in a while mm-hmm. 
Yeah, um, not super sweet, not super tart. It's well balanced. I was going to say it's balanced. New Terrain was a fun brewery that we went to, too, because they're nestled right at the base of one of the mountains surrounding oh, uh, Golden. So basically, they get a lot of hikers coming down off the trail. Um, and what better way to end a solid hike in the morning right. other than oh, yeah. to sit on, on a patio, look out over the ravine, and have a beer. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Their patio also had a lot of uh, outdoor beer gardens and patios over there. had the misters as well. Oh, yeah, um, sure. Especially that week because it was record highs of like 90 Ooh, during the day, yikes. 92. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those misters were welcome experience. When we went to Avery as well, Avery also had misters, misters going. Patio. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you needed it out there. But they also don't have the humidity that we have either. So they, they like the mist. Sure. But it's also a cooler temperature, too. <laughs> nice. Well, thank you for bringing that beer. Um, there was one other, one other thing that I wanted to go over. So for those of you that blog and vlog and do all that kind of great stuff uh, out on the interwebs, um, there's a, you've probably heard Andy and I talk about the Beer Now conference before. Mm-hmm. So they just announced where they're having 2020, and it's in Austin, Texas. I'm really so, excited. I hope I can go to it. <laughs> Andy doesn't know if he's going yet. I'm pretty sure I'm going. Yeah. So, and it's, Beth is going to go too. It's two months before my wedding. So, what is the date? The first weekend in August. Correct. One oh, of the, okay. Yeah. So, Austin, Texas. For those of you that don't know much about Austin, Texas, huge beer scene mm-hmm. and barbecue. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 that is like the number one thing I want to do when I go there. Yeah. Franklin Barbecue is, uh, is high on my list. And for those of you that have never watched PBS and Franklin Barbecue, you need to check that out. Is that the one with a super long line? Yes. Okay. And we're going to get there super early. <laughs> and they let you drink in line, so that helps. Oh, even better. Yeah. From what I've seen, it's usually Lone Star beer, but, you know, whatever. I you're guess waiting in line. It makes, it makes, the, morning, it makes right. the morning go by. I'm surprised most places don't do more of that. Like you're waiting in like a two hour line to get on a roller right. coaster. Here's a beer. Right. And for those of you that have, um, well, it'd be mostly for uh, people that have wives that like the uh, the show. Is it Fixer Upper? Yeah. The the Gaines's uh, place in Waco is north of there. Vicky hates that show, but you know whatever. <laughs> anyway, there's a lot of women that like, uh, and probably men that like that show. So uh, their their place is just north of Austin. So you can always do a day trip if you don't want to if you don't want to do uh, beer stuff that day. But anyway, super hyped about that. It's a great time to go meet other bloggers and vloggers and people uh, that are in the beer craft mm-hmm. beer world that are writing and videoing about everything craft beer. So. Moving and shaking as well. Yeah. So it was a good place for us to network with other people. We met for more sure. people from Wisconsin that we didn't even know existed. Mm-hmm. Um, cheers again, Greg. Yeah. (laughs) And then of course there's, uh, the people that are in Colorado, um, living a stout life. Yes. They, uh, they travel around in an RV. They live in an RV and they, they go do beer stuff. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you should check them out too. Yeah. Yeah. Ken and April. Yeah. They live, uh, they live a heck of a life. I'm kind of jealous, but hashtag goals, hashtag goals. (laughs) (laughs) But make it that long, get an RV and just go do Uh, beer stuff around the U S. Sounds like a good retirement. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, they're not retired. They work out of their. They do other jobs out of their RV. But anyway, I'm getting the signal that it's about time to go. So I've talked All long right. enough. Check us out on YouTube. Of course, you're watching us on, on YouTube probably, but you should subscribe if you haven't already done that because we're getting ever so closely to a thousand. And then Facebook and Instagram, and if you care to dive it, Twitter. So anyway, we'll see and you next podcast. week, everybody. Prost. Prost. Cheers. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time.